Hey, it's Kendra. Um, I want to talk about my upcoming big project, and this is the official announcement. Um, as you know, Fred Rogers is really important to me, and when I was a kid, my favorite part of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was, um, well, there was a couple of things. First, the seeing things made. That was really cool. I think a lot of kids loved that. Um, I particularly remember the crayon factory. Um, I also really liked the neighborhood of make-believe. I remember specifically um, Prince Tuesday being upset because his parents were fighting and thinking they were going to get a divorce. And that week, all on divorce and how it's not your fault as a child was really impactful for me as a little girl whose parents did fight, as all parents do. Um, and it meant a lot to me. I also really loved Bob Dog in the neighborhood of Make Believe. I thought he was really sweet and I wanted to take care of him because he also was a little sad and um, I've just, I've always been a healer so that definitely resonated with me. As an adult, um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, um, what really speaks to me is the thing he does where he looks right into the camera and speaks to just one child. And that doesn't just feel like to a child, it feels like to me. Um, he speaks to all of our inner children and comforts them because, you know, that part of us doesn't ever completely go away. Um, he makes you feel special and seen. And he really transformed my life. Um, he says, you don't ever have to do anything sensational to be loved. And as many millennials do go through, I went through depression um, for many years and I felt worthless and I felt like um, I was never going to be enough and be able to do enough and it was a time in my life that I was very stagnant and I didn't accomplish very many things um, and it was really hard. I spent a lot of time by myself and didn't have a community of people around me and didn't feel like I deserved that. Um, but because of his message that you don't have to do anything sensational and I like you just the way you are, accepting me in that moment, his words of acceptance helped me to accept myself that way and transformed my life. Um, that being able to believe that message that I didn't have to do anything spectacular to be valuable, like I was okay just the way I was even if that was being a couch potato and watching Parks and Rec six times in a row, um, I was okay. And because I believed that and internalized that, I transformed my life and I got off that damn couch and um, I accomplished so much more now, which just makes me realize how important that message is. It's People think it's counterintuitive to say, you don't have to do anything to be valuable. But really what that is, is that's giving people permission, giving people freedom to really just be themselves. Um, and I think a lot of depression just comes from a feeling of not being able to truly just be ourselves and we have to live up to all the pressures and expectations of this world. Um, but when I realized I don't have to do that and I can just be me and that's valuable, all of a sudden, I'm able to do all these wonderful things. I started singing again. I um, have traveled. I've invested in dance. I have friends that I see regularly and talk to. Um, all of those things came out of Fred Rogers. Um, so he's played a big part in my life. And um, how I came up with the idea for this project of really an homage to Fred Rogers um, 
a series that I want to produce that helps millennials like me that have gone through figuring out what life is all about and trying to deal with the pressures of the of our society and expectations that are piled upon us that we don't didn't necessarily want for ourselves um, and being able to come into our own um, so like a Fred Rogers series for adults and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit but I want to talk about how that came about so first of all one of the ideas that came to me very early on and this was still before I ever had any motivation to do anything I fell in love with the group Postmodern Jukebox, Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox, because I love jazz. And um, the only reason I know um, any radio hit songs is because of Postmodern Jukebox. So if I start singing along with the radio when you're with me, you're like, oh, she knows that because she listens to PMJ. But I loved what he did to bring people to jazz by transforming modern music. And I thought, what? How do we do this for opera? How do we do this for classical music? Um, because it's so beautiful and it has so much to offer. And I thought we've got to, There's got to be a way to do this. And I started thinking about songs that I could arrange that are pop songs, but sing them operatically. And that's not really the way to go with that. Um, singing Taylor Swift, well above the staff and where you can't even understand the words. It's just pointless. So um, last summer I performed Pergolesi's Salva Regina, which is from the Baroque period, um, which is time of like of Bach. I'm sure you're familiar with Bach. Um, and it just is this glorious cathedral piece. It's a Catholic liturgy. Um, the, the image I get when I sing this in my head is like some really... Um, powerful, rich person um, luxuriating in their fancy Manhattan apartment, um, listening to this uh, <laughs> with their cat swirling around their feet and um, in their, you know, smoke jacket kind of idea. Um, but I fell in love with this piece. It's very, very diverse and um, offers a lot. So, um, the six movements have just varying energies. The first movement, I, as I would listen to the introduction, and it's quite a lengthy one, I could hear like a Stairway to Heaven-esque sound, and I'm like, oh, I think I might be onto something where instead of taking modern music and making it sound like classical music, let's take classical music and um, bring it into a more modern era. Um, and the Salva Regina is still something that I'm working on. I just finished um, the instrumentation for it and I will be um, premiering that after my concert this month. So November 28th, I will do a live stream concert. Um, and as soon as the public one is over, I will go on to Patreon and do a Patreon only one. And that is where I will premiere um, the arrangement I am working on for, for the first movement of Salva Regina, and then the other movements will, are to come. And then also my patrons will get um, the digital track of Salva Regina this month. So that's one reason to join Patreon. Anyway, um, so that was, that was where the idea for the Baroque Soprano originated. And that w I, I had this idea of, of being an opera singer with um, a big amp and just setting up in a park and busking, <laughs> um, which I kind of do, you know, I just busk online instead. Um, anyway, I'm also, the other part of this is I'm a, I'm a, a platonic touch therapy specialist, which means basically I cuddle people for a... Um, a living and through that work I've found how important human connection is for our well-being it really plays into the healer side of who I am um, so I want I'm this is all to build up to say I'm 
an artist and a healer and I mean if I were to sum it all up I'd say I create connection so um, I started doing live streams and the broke soprano really broke out once quarantine hit because um, everything else halted and I'm like well this is an idea I have and it's mean something to me so I'm gonna try it so I did um, and when I do my live streams I try and do exactly what Fred did which is to look into the camera and imagine just one other person on the side and I literally do think of specific people when I'm looking into the camera um, I think of certain patrons I think of my mom I think of friends that I feel like will benefit or from what I'm singing or saying um, or people that I know um, are particularly looking forward to what I'm singing. Um, and I started talking about this with one of my patrons, and we both got really excited at the idea of doing this, as I said, Fred Rogers series for adults. Um, so the idea is, and, and this isn't new, but I, I want to produce music still that has high quality vocals with modern instrumentation. Um, I need to arrange a Fred Rogers-esque um, uh, song introduction, like It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, but, you know, Baroque soprano style, uh, based off of a Baroque piece, and um, go from there. But, so high quality vocals, modern instrumentation, and then relevant interpretation. So if any of you have seen my sexual frustration in quarantine video, um, where I took a piece from, the, um, from Orpheus in the Underworld and turned it into very relevant, being frustrated because you can't get out and touch anybody um, during COVID especially early on when we were all just literally stuck in our places. Um, so, um, the other part of this, uh, of, of my vision is that it's all connection based, audience centered. We're taking classical music out of the glass museum case and showing it in a more relevant, um, deconstructed manner. So, how do we do this? How do we take all these ideas and put them together? Um, well, I've had a lot of people help me along the way so far. Um, I've had patrons who give me ideas and support and encouragement. Um, Michelle Detweiler really has played the most instrumental role in encouraging me as an opera singer to develop my talent and find new people. Um, she's the whole reason I've traveled and gone to Italy and sung there. I've met new teachers through her um, that have helped me develop my skills even further. When I was in Italy, I sang at the Narnia Festival, and that's where I did the Salva Regina. It's also where... Um, I met Kayla Facilango, um, who is a wonderful friend. She believes in my vision and um, she helps me focus my brand and she calls me the queen of live stream because, man, I have put in a lot of hours into figuring out how to do this live stream thing well. And it started off with just my cell phone and a, and a um, H1N Zoom microphone. That's literally all I started with and prob I probably cellular data at least one of the live streams. Um, but that's grown a lot. I've, I've learned a lot about equipment and software and editing and um, making smooth transitions, adding overlays, um, audio, which is still in development. Man, don't even get me started on how hard audi audio is. Um, but she calls me the queen of live stream because I've put all of that work in there um, and I'm so grateful to her for her help and support. Chad, of course, Chad Spears, who is an amazing accompanist. But not only that, like, but when I was doing these by myself with um, backtracks in my apartment, he was the one on the other side of the camera. Um, well, not literally. He was in his apartment posting um, 
the information about the pieces in the comments section and um, sending me information so that I could know what was going on. I mean, God, I was still only using Facebook Live at the time and that was a whole different ball game. Um, learning the ins and outs of, of Facebook and getting kicked off. <laughs> I literally got shut out of my Facebook account right as I was trying to start a live stream. I think it was about my third or fourth live stream because I had been spamming my um, friends to let them know, hey, I've got a concert today. But because I was copying and pasting the same message, Facebook algorithms are like, hey, you can't do that. Anyway, um, it's been such a learning curve. And then I've just had so many other wonderful people throughout my life that have supported me. I mean, go back to childhood, mom, um, my choir teacher in high school, Susan Mann, um, other teachers that have believed in me and friends that are still with me even after over 25 years um, since we've met and I can't do it without a team of people. Uh, I talked a little bit about this learning curve of equipment and software and purchasing that. Oh my goodness. Um, that There's so many things that I could use to make things better, but I do the best with what I have. Um, and that's slowly growing over time as I'm able to do that. Um, and then of course I'm continuing to hone my vocal talent. I continue to take voice lessons. That's absolutely vital. It's so important that I am not the only person listening to my voice and critiquing it and making it better, that I have other people who are objective and who also have greater knowledge than me and understanding of the voice to help me make it better and, and grow. Um, and that takes time and study and money and it, it's a whole process. So those are the, that's what I've put into this so far. But to make this Fred Rogers homage series for adults a reality, I need you. I need people to invest in this. I need your ideas um, so that I can make the content relevant to you. Like seriously, comment, tell me, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna hear about? What are you struggling with? What can I cover in these series? I've got lots of ideas ranging from the struggles of dealing with um, the ideas and traumas of our childhood to God, just, you know, finding a therapist and finally taking care of things that we've struggled with for so long or making friends as an adult. That's hard. Holy shit. <laughs> you know, um, and whatever's mentionable is manageable as Fred Rogers says. So seriously, like if you've seen my opera and chill concert, you know, nothing's on the, off the table. I want to talk about things that are really relevant and important. Um, so let me know what you want to hear about. And I need time uh, to develop these skills and ideas and make them, make content for them and start the series and make it a real reality, um, which takes money. And so I need investors. Um, right now my goal is a minimum of 50 patrons just so that I can feel like we're growing on Patreon. We're at 10 right now. I love my 10 patrons. I'm so grateful for them. Um, if we can get to 50, then I feel like we've got a ball rolling. Let's make this happen. The other thing that could happen is one magic patron could subscribe to my $500 investor, um, Patreon, which they'd basically become the executive producer of this series. Um, so that would mean a whole lot if somebody did that. Um, but yeah, I need you. I need you to be there. This is audience oriented. So what can you do? Well, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and support me, you know, um, comment and share and go to Patreon and see if there's a tier that fits you. Um, and if there's something you see that I do that you know will touch someone, tell them, share it with them. I mean, that's how I operate. That's if I hear a song and I'm like, oh my God, yeah, I think Pam would really like this. Then I send the song to Pam, you know, that's, that's just, that's just how I connect with people. And I encourage you to do that as well. Um, 
I would love also to hear have your feedback. You can give me feedback to help me. Um, what do you love? What, what's going well? Um, and what do you want to see more of? And the last thing you can do is just be you. Um, thank you for being a part of my journey so far and listening to this long rant. I really hope this series gets off the ground soon and that you are here for that. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.